Hello and welcome back to another Shadowlands gold making video. So today we are talking about some items you can farm in the open world and sell on the auction house. These are items you can obtain from rare mobs in the open world, so some of these might be better suited for a quickly daily check-in, instead of actually farming them, since some of the rares could take hours to actually respawn. That being said, I tried to include a bit of everything, so some of the rares take several hours to respawn, others take an hour or two, and other respawns every minute so you can actually farm it as well. I thought this would be an interesting way to make some gold over time, and it gives you an opportunity to make gold without farming certain gold farms for hours and hours, so it's a different way to make gold which, which spices things up a little bit. I would like to give a quick reminder that if we reach 20k subs by the end of the year, I am going to give away an entire gold cap, as I announced in an earlier video. So in this video we will take a look at 5 different locations where you're hunting for rares and let's just jump straight into location number 1. First we'll look at this location in Shadowmoon Valley. Over here there's a rare mob called Demidos or Demidos, that drops a battle pet called the Servant of Demidos which is a cageable, and, which is a cageable battle pet and can be sold on the auction house. The respawn timer seems to be between 1.5 hours to 3 hours and the battle pet is valued at 18,000 gold on my server, with a regional average of 12k on the EU. The pet itself has a 15% drop chance, so don't expect to get it on your first try. The next location is in Dustwallow Marsh. Over here, head to the Alcas Island to the northeast. Once you fly here, you will be dismounted, and there are turrets that are guarding the island. These are not really that dangerous, and you can survive them as any class. If you want to be as efficient as possible, you can just play on a demon hunter, mage or a priest to glide or slow fall into the island itself once you get dismounted in the air. You can also use a goblin glider if you really want to. Once you get to the island itself, you want to head inside this house, go to the second floor, find Dr. Weevil and kill him. The item you're looking for here is called Big Red Ray Gun, and it only has a 3% drop chance so you will probably end up having to kill him a couple of times before getting it. But if you do end up getting it, this item has a regional average value of 30k on the EU, and it's currently listed at 70k gold on my server, so the price varies a lot. With 3% drop chance, the quantity available is also fairly limited, so you might be able to monopolize the item. Dr. Weevil seems to have a fairly low respawn timer, and should respawn within 10 minutes, so this is technically an item you can camp and farm for. The third location is in Stranglethorn Vale. Go to the Cape of Stranglethorn, aka the southern part of Stranglethorn, and all the way up north there you have a cave called the Crystal Vein Mine. Enter this cave and look for the rare called the Scale Belly. Scale Belly has a 1-3 to three hour respawn timer. The item you're looking for here is called the Chromatic Sword, and has a 0.7% drop chance from this mob, so this is a really rare item indeed. The Chromatic Sword has a regional average value of 250k on the EU, and it's currently listed at 450k on my server, so once again the prices vary quite a bit. Based on the insanely low drop chance of this item, the supply is also very limited, so if you end up getting it, you might be able to monopolize the market for it, and decide what price you want to sell it for. The fourth location we're looking at today is in Tanan Jungle, and we're actually talking about three different rare mobs that drop different items, but they are so close together that I chose to include all three in the same location. On the map you can see three different circles, and those are the locations for the mobs. These mobs drop the Crashin Thrashin Cannon Controller, the Crashin Thrashin Mortar Controller, and the Crashin Thrashin Roller Controller. These items are valued between 5k and 10k each, and they have a roughly 10% chance to drop from these rares. These guys only drop loot once per day, so this is something you can just add to your daily routine, as it takes you mere minutes to fly here from your garrison, so just use your garrison hearthstone and fly to the Inan jungle and kill these rares for a chance at some toys, which you can either learn if you need them, or sell for gold. The fifth and the last location we'll talk about today is in Stormheim. Over here you're looking for the Stormwing Matriarch, 
which is technically a rare mob, and this mob has a 100% chance to drop an item called the Stormborn Wellplane, which is a cageable battle pet. This battle pet is only worth 300 gold on average in the EU, and I think that is because the Stormwing Matriarch respawns pretty much instantly, or I guess technically there is a 1 minute respawn timer. If you are here on a level 50, or in Shadowlands I guess you can go here on a level 60 character, then you can pretty much one shot this mob, and with the 1 minute respawn timer that means you will basically get 60 pets per hour from this location. Again, it's not like this battle pet is worth a lot, but I just find it very interesting because it's a rare item, or it's a rare mob, that you can farm and it respawns super fast. And if you're in Stormheim, for some reason, doing something else, then stopping by this location and grabbing a couple of whelplings might not be a bad idea. Two of these locations were actually taken from Shapeshifter's Lazy Farm Sunday video series that I've been watching, where he covers multiple different items you can obtain from killing rares in the open world, so I just wanted to mention that and say that if you're looking for more items like the ones covered in this video, then you should definitely check out his channel as well. I also want to take some time to discuss my Patreon in this video, and my plans going into Shadowlands, just as a little outro I guess. So my plans for Shadowlands is to keep making gold and uploading gold making content, but I want to go back to the plan that I had in and used for gold making in Classic WoW, which was 90% of my gold making content being public on YouTube for everyone, and 10% of my gold making content being on Patreon. The reason for this is that whenever any gold farm is made public, the value of it drops drastically, especially for gold farms where you rely on selling the items you're farming to other people, but also for raw gold farms because once they are public, there is a much higher chance of them being nerfed. So moving forwards and starting already now, whenever I find some insane gold farm or gold making method that I want to keep somewhat low key, but also give out to my most loyal fans, then Patreon is where you will find that content. The way I've done it in the past that worked great was that I gave the content out to VIP and Legend tier patrons first, and then after a couple of days then Investor patrons would have access to it, and then after a couple of days Goldmaker patrons would have access to it. That means that everyone has access to everything, it just varies depending on when or how early you want that access. I also tried to keep some gold making secrets VIP and legend tier only, but most of the gold farms at least will be available for every single patron tier, the only difference is how quickly you get the information. I know it sounds like a sellout, and it probably is, but to me personally, I don't really do a lot of sponsorships on this channel and having a select few gold farms and gold making options that aren't available to literally everyone is a great way to ensure the quality of those farms stay high. And if you want to become a patron, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description of this video. Your support really means a lot to me, and I'm just trying to do my best at helping you guys make as much gold as possible. So yeah, I think that's it for the video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you're able to make some gold with it. If you do end up getting any of the low drop chance items, then let me know how much you sell them for, and how long it took for them to sell. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you want more gold making content, and that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.